And look, Pat, there was quite a long list of, of things that investors cheered, right? This is the third quarter where the markets basically said, Pat, we believe you on the turnaround story. Um, but, but on your to-do list, where do you think you are and what do you think you have left to do on that turnaround story? Yeah, thanks, Ed. And, you know, overall, hey, it was a great, uh, as we say, just a clean beat and raise on all the financial metrics. But even more important was the operational performance. And, uh, you know, as we said, hey, getting back to process leadership. And we, you know, delivered key milestones. And we still have at least another year or two to go on getting that done. But major milestones starting to deliver foundry customers. You know, I promised one at the start of the year. And now we have three on our most advanced process technology, major packaging wins and of course the product execution you know clean launch of the AI PC generation but also the server business getting back to profitability uh, ahead of schedule and uh, a little bit better performance there and delivering the AI everywhere uh, message with our accelerators our server product line so a really excellent quarter and I'm just so grateful for the Intel team it's been a journey and we are clearly coming back. Uh, Pat, you've talked to investors and indeed to Caroline and I about these new customers for the foundry business. When do we get names? When are you going to announce who these customers are? Well, you know, two things there, Ed. One is it's not generally the practice of the foundry industry for the foundry to be declaring their customer uh, names. So one, it's not practice, and also many of the customers consider it confidential and part of their competitive advantage and how and what technologies they choose. So I can't promise names, but we're going to characterize them as best we can. And you know, as we said, these are high performance and AI customers, and we've really seen the surge of interest in using the Intel technologies and foundry for different AI offerings in the marketplace. And that's both a wafer, but also a packaging. And this idea of advanced packaging, I mean, in addition to the three on the wafer side, we had two advanced packaging customers in AI, and that revenue materializes more rapidly and six more in the pipeline. So overall, a really substantial uh, quarter. And the AI space in particular has been the customers that have seen the most enthusiasm. And let's talk about the AI space because the running of AI models is where you see your future. It's not all just about the foundation models, it's actually the running of them, not just the building. But can you just relieve some of the anxiety coming from investors about a lack of clarity over data center future? And indeed, what is it that they need to hear from you? What more can you articulate that really makes it clear to them that you're gonna be front and center in the AI race? Yeah, thanks, Carolyn. And, you know, really, you know, first let's characterize what we're talking about. This idea of creating, you know, these frontier or foundation models, as is described, versus using, right, and the training and the inferencing against those models. And I sort of compare it to like weather models. Not that many people generate weather models, but a lot of people use them. And that's how we think about this next phase of AI. How do we make this inferencing or the use of the models broadly available? And that's gonna be you know, in the client, right? We talked about the AI PC. It's gonna be at the edge, right? In retail and manufacturing and uh, supply chains. But it's also gonna be in on-premise data centers. And as we've said, instead of taking my data to the cloud, I want to bring the AI to my data center where the data is already, and finally, work in the cloud. And you know, for the data center proper, as your question talks about, hey, you know, we knew we were going to lose some market share here, right? Those losses happened last year, and they're sort of playing out in the marketplace, but our roadmap is strong. And we over-executed uh, in the quarter on our next gen, our Gen 4 product, but did a bit better than we thought, and a lot of AI. AI use cases in this area of inferencing. The next generation, Gen 5, we're already ramping that in production, and that's going to get announced in December. But next year's products, we're already seeing great health, and we're ahead of schedule in those, and those really improve our competitiveness. And the 25 products will go into fab in uh, the first quarter of next year. So our whole roadmap and execution has really improved, and we start to see ourselves regaining market share in 24 in that area. And I mm -hmm. think that will be sort of the final piece of the turnaround story when you know the market sees okay data center is back strong they're winning in the ai space you know that'll be the end of the turnaround story and people say okay they did it well going back to that building that training of data can you talk a little about stability ai of course you've got a deal to build that ai supercomputer was that them really going to you for 
ultimately what Gaudi can provide over what Nvidia would? Or is it that you wanted to really be sort of offering them some carrots in the situation to be able to be helping with the training of the models? Yeah, great question. And, you know, now with Gaudi, we're now delivering performance and benchmarks that are as good as the best in the industry. So we've gotten our performance there. You know, there was also some of this work that, you know, the models were created and much of the software industry was working, you know, on the NVIDIA platform. So we had to do some of the software work to get those running on the Gaudi platform. And they're looking for more cost-effective choices and ones that are supply chain available in the industry. And as we're ramping our Gaudi product line. We're getting that software work done. You know, they're priced more competitively. Customers are saying, wow, I can do that work and do it at a much lower power performance envelope than the alternatives, you know, and uh, have a much more cost-effective model training and inferencing at scale. Okay, you know, we're seeing a real surge of interest. And as I said, we doubled our uh, pipeline of customers this quarter, you know, and we, you know, like others in the industry are now supply chain constrained and we're racing to catch up to that demand on our Gaudi product line. For our Bloomberg radio and television audience worldwide, we're speaking to the CEO of Intel, Pat Gelsinger. Pat, the story of this week has been chip companies entering the PC processor market on ARM architecture. How do you hold off those newcomers? You know, attention, for example, on Apple this coming Monday, and they have done well in that domain. Yeah, and I think of the AI, you know, PC as an exciting category. And this is one that we announced, uh, and, you know, we've been the first company on that. And we're now ramping our first generation AI PC products called the Core Ultra. So others are talking about what they might do in a year or two years. We're ramping products in the marketplace, you know, today. We announced over 100 ISVs in our AI acceleration program. So they're coming on board. And before others... Uh, have their products even shipping in the marketplace. We'll be launching our next generation, our Lunar Lake product, you know, which we've already demonstrated for next year. And Panther Lake, our 25 product, you know, we're sending that into FAB on our leadership Intel 18A process technology in Q1. So I feel like we have a very strong roadmap. And hey, the idea of an ARM-based uh, PC, you know, they've always been sort of niche and low end with the exception of Apple. And there it's not ARM, it's Apple and their ecosystem. So for the broad Broader Windows R market, you know, it's always been pretty uh, low end, right, and insignificant in the bigger context. And as long as we deliver our roadmap, I feel very confident that as others surge into the AI PC space, you know, this is a lift to the overall PC market, and we'll be, you know, uniquely positioned to benefit from that. Pat, going back just a second to stability in the AI supercomputer, that's kind of in the assembled component domain. But are you saying or are you able to confirm that's a paid relationship where stability oh, yes. pays you for use of Gaudi? Oh, yeah. Yeah, this is a, this is a major customer, and uh, we'll be building that uh, with them, of course, working closely with them. But this is a paid customer relationship. You know, we also see quite another uh, set uh, around our OEMs. We announced a major partnership with Dell, right, for uh, not only Xeons, but also Gaudis as they come on-premise and their cloud offerings. You know, we've seen a big upsurge in uh, Gaudi interest in the Intel developer cloud. We had a 5x increase in the developers on our developer cloud, much of that on the uh, Gaudi platform. And as I said, we uh, saw, you know, well over a billion dollars uh, last quarter. We've approximately doubled that uh, this quarter of Gaudi demand uh, worldwide. And those are largely paid customer uh, engagements. So yes. overall, we're just seeing a surge of interest with Stability AI, Dell, and many others. Pat, we every earnings look to your forecast for the PC market, and you're slightly more positive than consensus in terms of literally how many PCs you think will ship around the world this year. I guess part of that is baked into your sales forecast for the current period as well. What gives you that confidence, and why is it that consumers will return to buying PCs? Yeah, and there's probably three different factors there. You know, one is I can say, hey, we gave this 270 million-ish PCs uh, being uh, sold through this year. And we said that early in the year. Many thought that we were too optimistic. Hey, we look at it today and we're almost, you know, spot on with our accuracy on that uh, forecast. Second, we've seen the industry, you know, not just Intel, but the industry overall 
inventory levels are now healthy. You know, when we look at our sell-in rate versus sell-out rate, you know, the product is selling through. I'd also say, hey, we're off to a good start in Q4. We're a couple of weeks into the quarter, and as I said on the earnings call, hmm, really good start to Q4 as well, and, you know, seasonality is a bit above in Q4 historical levels. We also have things like Windows 10 end of service coming from Microsoft. You know, Microsoft's about to uh, release their co-pilot uh, products, but I'd say the sizzle in the marketplace is around this AI PC, broad new use cases for the PC. And I've compared it to the Centrino moment yeah. of 20 years ago when Centrino really ushered Wi-Fi at scale into the industry. And we think that's exactly what's going to happen with the AI PC. It will be a driver of new applications and use cases for the PC and bringing a bit more excitement, a bit acceleration, more users coming into the marketplace because it's going to give significant new capabilities to PC users. Is that what gives you your gross margin level of 60% again? Is that where the confidence comes from? Well, to get our overall gross margins up above 60%, I need the whole business to improve, uh, Carolyn. Obviously, we're you know, making good progress in the PC. You know, I also need to improve my factory network. And uh, as we get back to leadership, we finish this super aggressive five nodes in four years. You know, I'm churning through capital very rapidly to get back to leadership. That's a big factor. Getting the data center business healthy, going back to one of your earlier questions, another you know, factor in getting back to our margins structures. You know, one of the other things we did this quarter was also have great operational success on our cost saving initiatives. And we said, you know, we would result in three billion savings. You know, we've also cleaned up the company. I've exited 10 businesses since I've been here. And uh, now we think we're finished with that phase and we just get focused on growing the company again to the future. So part of its growth, part of its this focus areas across the businesses and part of it's just increased operational discipline. But this quarter's results, we're well on our way to accomplish that. And you talk of operations there and we didn't get time to talk about it but we know that you do indeed have operations in Israel and we think of your own employees and, and your infrastructure there at this time, Pat. So thank you very much for spending some time with us and walking us through your numbers. Intel CEO Pat Gelsinger there.